welcome to Inside Edition, where we discuss national, regional, and international issues in depth. The higher education sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain has witnessed steady development in recent years in terms of academic programs, teaching strategies, and educational training. In fact, the Kingdom of Bahrain has taken vital measures to support both public and private higher education institutions in order to promote excellence, creativity, innovation and research capabilities so as to encourage and strengthen integration between educational outcomes and national development. Established in 2001, Ahliya University was the first private university to be licensed by the government of Bahrain. Throughout the previous 20 years, it worked on providing students with practical and professional learning experiences experience based on the best international standards. To know more about that, we are pleased to be joined here at the studio by the founding president of Ahliya University, Professor Abdullah Al-Hawaj. Welcome, dear viewers. Joining me here in the studio is the founding president of Ahliya University, Professor Abdullah Al-Hawaj. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Professor, first of uh, can you give us and our viewers a brief idea about Ahliya University's establishment, its vision, uh, as well as its special framework of the 10 strategic initiatives? First of all, uh, I would like to thank you very much for uh, this uh, invitation and for the opportunity uh, to shed light on the success story of Ahliya University. Thank you for coming and your program, of course, Inside Edition and Bahrain Television. Mm -hmm. uh, before we start, I would like to يعني, go back, you know, yeah. uh, to my career, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. when I joined uh, the University of Bahrain uh, in 1980 as an assistant professor. Yeah. And of course, I went on to associate and then professor, I was chairman of the mathematics department for six years, and chairman of computer science for two years, yeah. and dean of students and uh, registration for four years. Uh, during that time, really, I had a trip mm -hmm. to the United States, mm -hmm. a one-month tour, touring universities. It was a special program assigned by the University of Bahrain through uh, the American Embassy. I visited, I started with Boston, and I visited universities like Harvard University, mm -hmm. MIT, Boston, Northeastern Colleges, few. And then we yeah. went on to other places, visited Duke University mm -hmm. and uh, Stanford University. Right. I was astonished. I was really impressed with, with what I have seen. Mm -hmm. And how can private, sector do this yes i saw the greatness of the university the technology the science and i start reading about it yeah can we do it we used to have very great history yeah we always said that we were teaching the world what happened to us mm. so the idea started there yeah where the private sector had a role to play and they must play it in all developments, higher education. So I was haunted mm -hmm. with the, the dream. So it was really a dream. Yes. And I thought, can we do it? Not only Bahrain. Yes. I was thinking even wider. I was thinking to the GCC area. I was thinking of the Arab region. Why can't we go back? I realized that only using the government is not enough. Mm -hmm. There is a great res uh, resources are not used. Yeah. How can we make these resources used yeah. and to partner the government in the future of the generation? So the dream start growing yeah. bigger and bigger. So when I came back to Bahrain, I started con contacting friends. Mm -hmm. In the early 90s, I was in a conference at Trinity College and Cambridge University yeah. in London. Mm -hmm. I met two professors, from Saudi professors from King, Saud Univer uh, King Fahad University of okay. Petroleum and Minerals. Yeah. We discussed on lunch mm -hmm. the prospectus of the private sector to 
invest yes. in higher education. Yes. And we came with a very clear conclusion. The greatness of America, mm -hmm. technology, science was, was due to the, their universities. Mm -hmm. Can we do it? We came with a conclusion, we must do it. Yes. So when we came back to Bahrain, you know, yeah. we formed a committee. Mm -hmm. We applied to the government at that time. It was 1991 when we applied for the first okay. time. Unfortunately, people were shocked. How can you think of private higher education? The mm. government is responsible. Yeah. I said to them, look, the best universities in the world are private. Are private. Mm -hmm. Harvard is private. Absolutely. MIT is private. Duke. And I was really, really impressed by the idea of how they were established, yeah. you know. Even in the Arab world, I looked at the American University of Beirut. Yes. Even in Egypt, I looked at these universities and I said, can we do it? Mm. Can the Bahrainis and the Saudis and the Kuwaitis and the GCCs do that? Can the Arab go back to the old days? It was a dream. Yes. And I tell you, it took many, many years trying to convince people, but they have a very bad experience with some universities earlier, government universities, and yes. they were not ready. Yeah. If you have a great vision and a clear vision and insistence, things will come at one time. Right. And I tell you, in 2000, the opportunity came mm -hmm. when the king declared his reform project. Yes. And then when they formed the National Charter Committee, yes. I was honored to be selected a member of the Supreme Committee yes. and representing the education. And I was one of the people who delivered the speech to the king during the first draft of the National Charter. That's quite an achievement. And in the National Charter was very clearly in chapter one, before even talking about the regime and uh, the monarchy and this, it said that universities are beacons of knowledge yes. and s research must be practiced freely. This And it said very clearly the state of Bahrain support the establishment of private universities. Yes. That was the beginning. And the Bahraini people voted in the National Charter. Mm -hmm. And you know, 98.4% said yes, yes to the great reform. Mm -hmm. And Ahliya University was born. Yes. Three weeks after the voting on the National Charter, the cabinet approved the establishment of the first private university in Bahrain. And now, it's we started. Now I was looking what to do how to implement all this. It's not an easy task. It was really, really difficult. I've gone through a lot of hurdles, but I must tell you, I got great support from the top. I had got great support from many, many people, you know. Yes. And we started, you know, establishing Ahliya University. From day one, we thought that this should be a different institution different way of thinking, different way of teaching. We do not want to go back to the same old ways of memorizing right. things. Can we do it? Can we start researching from day one? Right. right. And the task was very big, mm -hmm. but my dream is growing. Yeah. And I always love to remember, you know, words of a dream, mm -hmm. my dream. Oh, I started repeating that really. Yes. And things have gone great, you know, and Ahliya University was established. Now you can see Bahrain had about 17 or 18 universities. Yes. The idea is, and I'm still insisting to do it, to make Bahrain Boston of the Gulf. Yes. Because when I went to Boston, I was really astonished and I always saw the brain of America was in Boston. I am really insisting in making Bahrain the brain of the GCC, if not the brain of the Arab world. Yeah. Although we're a small country, we're small numbers. With a lot but of potential. With a lot of potential, a lot of uh, thinking. 
and we can do it. You know, we are insisting. So Ahliya University was established uh, from day one. We uh, had a uh, yani, uh, partnership with great universities. Yes. We started a partnership with the Brunel University of London from day one. Yeah because I've done one of my post doctorate in Brunel mm -hmm. University, so I take this opportunity, I know them, I contact them. And we had partnership with the George Washington University, some programs. Yes. We have now partnership with some French universities, and we're starting now to the east. Yeah. We've gone to Malaysia. We are having very soon uh, partnership with an Indian university. Yes. So I think it's a very important that uh, that dreams yes. convert to reality. Yes. And I'm sure we can do it. I always, I had objections from many, many people, mm -hmm. you know, who told me, well, private education means business. I said to them, no, I will not accept that these uh, resources are not used for training our future, training our children, training our y young people. And that's what I believe. Absolutely. I believe that the state and the private sector are two wings of one bird. And we can only fly with the two uh, wings. We cannot fly with one. So I went on and on. And I insisted, really, I do not want to go further because I've gone through very, very difficult times yeah uh, يعني, it's unbelievable but at the end the dream started yes. it's not the end of the dream of course yes. this is the beginning of the dream yes and now we have uh, ahli university being recognized in nearly everywhere right uh, and we have got a lot of awards we'll talk to uh, about it uh, in a bit, yeah. In a bit. Well, yes. well uh, actually, um, just to point out how vivid this uh, this uh, dream of yours was, it started 30 years ago uh, in a lunch uh, with a couple of professors, yes. and 20 years ago it became something real. And um, you've mentioned this before. There's a lot of support that came uh, from the top. Um, what can you tell us about the support that was provided by the Bahraini government to facilitate and develop the private educational institutions' performance specifically? There is a great belief here mm. that education is very important. Mm. And we got very good support. We've been assigned a land to build the new campus, yeah. a beautiful piece of land in a very prime area, yeah. Salman City. Yes. It's a future city. Yes. And it has the name of Salman, yes, who of is course. you know, the uh, crown prince and the prime, prime minister, minister and so many visions i hope will be fulfilled yes at this time so we are going really should to build a state-of-the-art campus mm -hmm. in this city i want this city to be the city of knowledge the city of technology so the new campus really uh, was assigned by the government mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, the foundation stones was laid by uh, the late His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Sheikh Khalifa bin Salman yes. uh, and uh, he was always a great support. Mm -hmm. The King have shown so much support to this project. The Minister of Education is always supported. Mm -hmm. We have ha the uh, BQA Bahrain quality agency also or authority yeah. are a great supporter. I am very, very happy to tell you, maybe at one time we always get angry why they are checking here and there, but I tell you, the education in Bahrain, higher education in Bahrain is in great hands. We have higher education from one side and we have the qualities from one side, and it's very rare you see in countries the two. Yes. In Bahrain we have the two and right. we fulfilled the requirement of the two institutions. And that's why I really can see Bahrain become really Boston of the Gulf. And I can't see Bahrain become the brain of the Gulf. We have a great support from the government and they believe 100% that the future is education. Yes. The future is research also. You know, it's, it's very, very important. 
And we were lucky when, when this pandemic came yeah. with the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. We were ready. Yes. Second day, we were straight teaching online right. because of the prior investment, right. the proper investment, and because of all our ICT, even not only in Ahliya University, in all over Bahrain. Yeah, you know. Absolutely. Um, the pride that you speak of in um, the education system in Bahrain also stems from your personal pride in the alumni of Al Ahliya University. Um, there are very noteworthy um, alumni. Can you tell us a little bit about your previous graduates and the ranks that they have reached over the years? Well, you know, uh, I'm very, very happy to tell you that Al Ahliya alumni have s made so much s uh, success stories, you yeah. know, and. Uh, Recently, we are even, you know, discussing the success story of many of our alumni. Yeah. Uh, I'm very proud to tell you, you know, that the speaker of our parliament, of our alumni, which is very important, uh, one of our alumni, Amina al Hawaj, yes. uh, have received so many international awards, you know, from all over the world, yes. from the UK, from the US, from Russia, mm -hmm. in India, of course, from uh, the our king in Bahrain. Yes. She has received so many and she has registered so many. Uh, yes, so that's very important. She's one of our alumni. And we uh, opened now an invention center in Ahliya University. She is heading that invention center. We want to tell uh, the, the alumni and the student, you know, you can do it. Ahliya University is a great support for that. You know, many, many of our uh, professors yeah. have scored very high in research. Yes. The best researcher in the Arab world last year was a professor at Ahliya University. Wonderful. And the second best was a professor at Ahliya University. Now in research in Scopus, we are one of the best universities in the area. We are number three in Bahrain after Bahrain University and the Arabian Gulf University, mm -hmm. and this is really, so climate of research is starting in Bahrain, and we are very, very proud to say that this is a part of the dream. That's the beginning. It's not, we have not reached where we want to be. We are just steps forward, but with a very clear vision, yes. with the vision of Ahliya University to be locally and internationally a world-class university yes. in education, in research, mm -hmm. and also in community services. Right. It's very, very important. So all the initiatives which we have go towards that, you know. Yes. So we have strategies, very important, but the very important we, that we are a part of the society yes. and we would like visible impact on this society we would like people to feel it mm -hmm. you know yeah. so exactly i mean um you actually bring me to my next point um the community um, um addition that you bring is not just to the bahraini community or the gcc community but to the worldwide community how does ahliya university contribute to achieve achieving the national 2030 sustainable development goals the sdgs of course, this is a very important question. I am really, really happy that you raised this question because after all, why we are studying, why we are doing universities for a better future. Right. So we want to eradicate really uh, poverty. We want to diminish, you know, hunger. We want really to help disabled. We want to be, you know, and, and this is really, it goes very clearly with the Ahliya University strategy and it's aligned with the national strategy uh, of Bahrain yeah. to 2030. Right. So we are really uh, very clear about that. So Ahliya University want visibly to change things and to be very clear, we want to graduate, uh, you know, graduate who knows about the sustainable development. We want to do research which really go towards the same, the same uh, things. Yes. So we worked, and that's why when we came to the 17 SDGs of the United Nations, mm -hmm. we felt it's the responsibility of every institution, 
every government, every ministry to satisfy these. So Ahliya University went and started with seven uh, SDGs, mm -hmm. selected very carefully. It, is, it, it, it fits our strategy and it fits the Bahrain uh, strategy. Yeah. And we are committed to it. And we went and we listed these in the website of the United Nations mm -hmm. to be recognized. And we are now a member of that league, you know. Yeah. We selected, of course, seven mm -hmm. uh, very important SDGs. We will do the rest also. We started, of course, with uh, health and well-being. Mm -hmm. We started with the quality of education. We started with uh, uh, gender equality. We started with diminishing the inequality, you know, because inequality is a very, very important, you know, you know, where people should share resources. Right. We shouldn't have people very poor and others. And this is very important. That's what the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals, that was set in 2015. Yeah. And by 2030, we want to see that most of the countries and most of the ministries and have most of it. this have achieved it. Yeah. Ahliya University is committed to that goal and we will always uh, to try to be leaders because we believe really that Bahrain is a small, but Bahrain have a very nice people, you know. Yes. Bahrain is a smart country, uh, you know, when you go and look and read in the Forbes magazine and all that, yes. the best life for expatriates exactly. is in Bahrain. Right. We want to take also this a very important uh, benefits to benefit Bahrain. Mm. That's why I think, you know, and I'm hoping that we fulfill this dream that we become the center of excellent education, the center of even research. I am as a Bahraini, I feel so proud when somebody, when he's uh, coming to Bahrain in the airport and, w and asked, what's the, uh, the purpose of your visit? Yeah. And the answer is to have education or to learn things or to do research. Th this makes me really, as a Bahraini, very proud, yes. proud that I did fulfill what I want, you know. Yes. Uh, this is a goal, we set it for ourselves. And the good thing that all the founders of Ahliya University believe in the same goals that the goal is to be a part of the world. Yeah. And we are also very humane. We believe in humanity. Mm -hmm. We don't differentiate between people. Yes. And that's why from day one, we have collaboration with Brunel University. Mm -hmm. I want to give the world an example of a partnership between a Western reputed research university and a young, ambitious Middle East University. Yes. And it's been going on for over 18 years. You know, we started with uh, two plus two yeah. programs where students study two years in, in Bahrain and then get two years to Brunel and take a Brunel degree. Wonderful. Or he want to come back and take Bahrain degree. Mm -hmm. And then we went on to the master level. And since the last 15 years, we're doing PhD. And we've graduated more than 60 PhDs. And a very important, most of these 60 are women. Yeah. And by that, we fulfill also the role of the women, which we believe from day one yes. that they have the equal right. And here I learned that very clearly uh, from the National Charter. Yeah. The King of Bahrain, from day one, when we sat in the National Charter, he gave the women the right of everything similar to the men. It wasn't easy 20 years ago when you yeah. think of that. Now when we look at it, that women votes and women, this, we think it's something normal, normal yeah. but not 20 years ago. It was really a revolution at that time. Okay. The same thing, we are doing it with education. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, when we, when we talk about women equality, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm, I'm really happy with this PhD without residence okay. because not every woman can travel to England or to America to take PhD. Right. So we came with this, this new 
PhD without residence. It's a British degree. Mm -hmm. Fully have the whole British uh, requirement. They go and take their viva in Brunel, mm -hmm. but researchers in Bahrain. And that's why we've managed uh, to graduate so, so many women. And this fulfill the ambition of yes. Her Royal Highness uh, Sheikha Sibutia or Princess Sibutia because I think this is very important. And we work hand in hand, really, uh, to uh, show Bahrain and put Bahrain in its position as a leader among the uh, sisters, it you does. know. Mm -hmm. uh, and we believe that Bahrain history, you know, in education, it goes more than 100 years. It does. Some of our brothers, you know, from Kuwait and uh, Oman and even Saudi Arabia and this were studying in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. I want this to come back. I want them to look at Bahrain, this small jewel, you know, but this is where they learn and this is where the education. And believe me, believe me, we can do it. I had a very hard time to convince people. I remember I was in a conference in uh, South Africa mm -hmm. and some of my Arab colleagues were insisting that, you know, uh, private education or private higher education is a commercial. And I told them, look, if Harvard and MIT can do it, we will do it. Yes. And I'm always proud when I read the, la the, the book of, of uh, President Obama. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the greatness of America because of its universities. Yes. He said it very, very clearly. And I always remember these things. We always read history. And I remember uh, in France, when, uh, when President de Gaulle mm -hmm. was leaving power, yes. the, a journalist asked him, aren't you scared to leave power? He said, I will not be scared if two things are right. And he said, proper education and real uh, uh, good, good judges or good, you know, this is a very, very yes. important. Yes. So education comes first in everything. Yeah. And I really want to tell you, this is what the King of Bahrain believes in. I have a, v a, a, a straight talks with him, you know, mm -hmm. when I was appointed as a member of the Supreme Committee. Mm -hmm. And he said very clearly, there is no reform unless education is at the heart of the reform. And that's why we are strong and we want to do it. Because normally, reforms come from the bottom yes. and it gets resistance from the top. Yes. In our story, in Bahrain, beautiful story, it came from the top. Yes. And the people, you know, embraced uh, it, embraced it mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's how we go in. So we want to do it also in universities. We want to do it in education. And I can see in a few years that few universities in Bahrain will be listed among the top universities. We have already, one of the best things we have done in 2018, QS ranked Ahliya University as the first rising university in the Arab region. Mm -hmm. And that for us is, is really achievement. an achievement. Yeah. And at the same time, it puts a lot of Pressure on you. Yes, yes, pressure on us, you know. Yes. Can we do it? Yeah. Will we stay in the top of it? And we are doing it, alhamdulillah. Yes, yes, alhamdulillah. I mean, I can see um, your passion when you talk about it and the fact that education is so important um, has been a topic for hundreds of years because people have seen the importance of education early on. But in the world that we live in today, accreditation, um, uh, uh, education of the educators is important, uh, facilitating research in the concept of making it uh, achievable for people that don't know anything about research. All of these things are very difficult to enhance within one um, university or one educational path. And that's, that's what Ahliya University has achieved. It was able to bring everything together under one roof and provide this. As a private university, people always talk about it, as you have seen, said, that it might be a profit institution. But really, 
education and materials used and technologies used, all of these do cost money. And when that goes into that, it actually balances things out because at the end, you are a graduate of that university. Now, um, in performing its duties, the Ahliya University deals and cooperates with various international institutes, which you have already mentioned, to exchange expertise. Um, can you tell us about why these collaborations are important for your graduates specifically and for the country of Bahrain in the end effect, the end user basically? Of course, it's very, very important to be a part of the international community. This mm. is one important thing. It's very important for our graduate to feel mm. that their degree is equivalent to any degree yes. anywhere. Mm. I'm very, very proud to tell you some of our graduates went back to their countries mm. and have leader and leading roles, and this is very, very important. I remember one student, physiotherapist, you know, mm. uh, she's a German, yeah. and she went back to Germany, and now doing very, very well. My right. son have visited Germany two years ago, and he told me, uh, you, you know, you remember Sarah? I said, yes. He said, well, she has her own hospital in Beautiful. Germany. This, this makes me feel very, very, very happy, yeah. you know. Uh, we have some of our uh, alumni now mm -hmm. are really in very, very key positions in Bahrain, in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. I uh, visited Kuwait two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, honored to be with the prime minister, the late prime minister, to visit the uh, Amir of Kuwait. Yes. And the uh, first question from Amir of Kuwait to me how many Kuwaiti students you have? You have? <laughs> and I told him, uh, your, your, your Highness, we have graduated 400 Kuwaiti students, mm -hmm. some of them working in your own uh, court. <laughs> you know. And by chance, two of the Kuwaiti students who did with us PhD are working in the Amiri court in Kuwait. And he was so impressed, you know. So I really feel that collaboration with different parts of the world is very, very important. Yes. It really uh, ease the, w the thinking of the students. It makes them a part of a wider uh, society mm -hmm. and they can go anywhere they want, you know. So, so I, I want really uh, to, to tell my students, you know, you're not learning it for a job only. No, you can do many, many things, you know. That's why these days we encourage entrepreneurs so much and we tell them, look, you don't be looking for a job only. You can create jobs for the others. Absolutely. And this is uh, uh, where uh, Ahliya University always want to do this, you know. Absolutely. I am always very happy to mention that I believe also in the bigger uh, picture, you mm. know. Uh, in, uh, if, uh, ten years ago, we established the union of the private university in the GCC. Okay. We made a conference, a very big conference at Bahrain. Mm -hmm. It was under the patronage of His Royal, of His Majesty the King, yes. and I invited 55 presidents from the area and yeah. from abroad, and uh, it's, it was really a great day for Bahrain to be the center of education. I am at the moment also, the ch uh, the I am the chairman of the executive committee of the Arab private uh, universities uh, in, in Jordan, Amman, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it all stems from my belief in one thing. We must work with our brothers and sisters. Yeah. We must try to fulfill the dreams of our grand parents yeah, or ancestors. our ancestors mm -hmm. and, and we can do it we have the knowledge we need more uh, maybe uh, uh, yani to be really yani unfair fear fearful off yes uh, yani when you do anything like this there is always risks yes we should take that bit of risk. Okay, it's a calculated risk, but we should do it. Take and we should be very rich and we should be very ambitious. Yes. You know, I do not want. I I remember many. Uh, I think six or seven years ago, mm -hmm. I've mentioned that I want to be one of the top five private university in the GCC. Okay. 
And I want to be among the 500 best universities in the world. I remember many people told me, you're crazy, you are mad. We've done that. Yes. Two years ago, in QS and the Times Higher Education, we are among the five best private university in GCC. Mm -hmm. And we are 35 among the Arab universities out of 1,000 university. Yes. And we are very close to become a part of the 500, and I hope we will do it. We set a target by 2030, and we will reach it. And I assure you, and if uh, God give us, you know, uh, mm -hmm. yani extension long life, and yeah. long life, inshallah, inshallah, we will celebrate that, inshallah. Definitely, on the show even. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, how did the I mean the pandemic has affected all sectors um, be behind the scenes we talked a little bit about um, how um, ICT how Bahrain was already prepared not knowing that there's a pandemic coming but everything was already prepared for the um, uh, basically the turning into a digital educational system so mm -hmm. how did the current health circumstances change the teaching and learning process and how do you see the future of educational institutions after the pandemic of course this is a very important uh, question because uh, this is the talks of of everybody. Yes. I must assure you, and I will tell you, maybe this is a test for us, mm. you know. Bahrain, in general, have done very well in the ICT, mm. have done very well in the infrastructure, and that's which allows us immediately to convert to uh, online teaching. Yes. Ahliya University took only one day mm. to convert from face-to-face -face teaching to online teaching. Yes. Okay, we have problems. Assessment is a great problem. And we are trying to make sure we assess students properly. Yeah. But this is a new revolution. We must take opportunity from what happened. Yes. And we should. And we should not be late. We should be proactive rather than reactive to things, you know. And we talk to the, uh, uh, we talk to them very clearly. We the told them, yes, we uh, told the them, we, yes, the authority. We told them we should be really proactive. We should learn from what happened. Yes. One important thing I learned personally also. Mm. And I want everybody to learn it. We should collaborate. We should work together. And very clearly, we were very successful in implementing teaching and everything during that period. Mm -hmm. We have learned a lot of things. And I tell you, it's a revolution. Yes. Education and higher education been going on like this for the last two or three hundred years unchanged. Yes. It's not going to be the same after days. the pandemic. It's going to be different. Yeah. So using artificial intelligence, using the application of artificial intelligence is right. very, very important. Mm -hmm. Jobs going to change. Many things going to change. We should be prepared. Yes. We should not be teaching jobs which will be vanishing soon. We should be try trying to teach what jobs going to to come right. and universities have great responsibilities there is unfortunate things of course which I should probably talk about it we should really invest more in research mm -hmm. as country as Arabs as GCC because I hoped that I've heard that one of our labs or one of our research labs are trying to invent a vaccine or something yeah. Unfortunately, we were not there, yeah. but we should learn right. and we should invest more in education, higher education, research. Yes. We should go and look at the percentage of investment in research. Yes, yes. And we should really look at where is the resources. We shouldn't be looking at the budget of the government only and ask the government to spoon feed us, ask the government to give us everything. We should work all together. Absolutely. And that's why I, I am a pioneer of talking all the time 
about partnership between the government and the private right. sector. I remember I gave a lecture, I think it's about 16 or 17 years ago okay. in Riyadh, mm -hmm. in the GCC headquarter. Uh, and I called my lecture at Ta'lim al Mukhtalat, okay, the mixed, mixed education. education. Yeah. I meant, you know, the government and this, the so support, the, the resources, you know. I do believe that this is very important. I do believe that because private universities should have responsibilities, also national right. responsibilities. Right. They shouldn't be just commercial. Right. And the government should support them when they fulfill the requirement of the national uh, requirements. Yes. Th so this is very, very important, you know. And I really would love the days when it comes when we don't talk about private and public. We talk about quality. We talk about uh, graduation. Yeah. The quality of a mm. graduate, quality of research, right. quality of this. Why I'm saying this? Because sometimes, you know, uh, a person like me, I worked half my life in public education, you know, and the second in private. private. And I found that there is a lot we should do, you know. When I come to the Bahrain TV sometimes, sometimes they feel, you know, oh, this is a private institution. Should we uh, support it or not? I say, well, I am a national institution. Yes. I work for the uh, goodness of the my community. country yes. and the Bahrain community. Right. And I, I feel so happy when I achieve things for Bahrain. And I think everybody should do the same. And we should always, always support investment in education, investment in research. So dreams. Yes become reality right and I always you know from my readings at least believes that there is nothing impossible it's not if you have a great or clear vision yes and you really work hard to fulfill this vision it will happen the moment will come yes and it will happen yes you know. well when when you speak about um, um, the collaborations between the private and the government sector as well as the new ideas specifically for the labs. I remember one of our guests was um, uh, Dr. Sheikh uh, Fay Al Khalifa who um, created actually the SSU lab uh, at the University of Bahrain that is dedicated fully to any researcher that wants to research within the sustainable development um, field. That is one um, example of how Bahrain is also uh, promoting the research fields that are needed in the world, not just for Bahrain, yes. but in the world. Bahrain might be um, a small kingdom, but it has a very, very big impact uh, on the international arena, whether in education or elsewhere. You mentioned one of the other guests that I had was um, the head of the Accreditation and Quality Assurance Center of Bahrain. Yes. Uh, Al Ahli University has its own, has formed its own uh, center for accreditation and quality assurance to ensure achieving excellence in the quality of its learning, teaching, and research. What can you tell us about the importance of the outcomes of that kind of an approach? Of course, it's very, very important. From the beginning, we felt quality should be the big, you know, address. Yeah. We should not yani, uh, yani put quality as, uh, as a name. Okay. No, we should live quality. Yes. So from day one, I believe that we should have an accreditation and quality. Mm -hmm. We call it Center for Accreditation and Quality. Yes. And uh, I can tell you, that Ali University has done very well. Mm -hmm. Ali University was chosen as the representative of the private university in the first pilot by Bahrain Quality Assurance. Beautiful. And we've done really well. Mm -hmm. Then when the real thing happened, uh, I, I can tell you, every single program in Ali University have passed quality. Beautiful. And we have really uh, been put in category one. At one time, there was three categories of university. Ali University was in category one yeah. with another two universities, you know, at that time mm -hmm. by, by quality assurance. 
Accreditation is a very, very important. We have now received accreditation from the Higher Education Council. Yeah. This will make us go to the good old days where the Saudis and the Kuwaitis and the uh, GCCs and the others to come to, to yeah. Bahrain. And yeah. this is very important because it's a part of our goal for the economy of Bahrain. It's very important that the impact of education goes in the economy of Bahrain. Right. I have seen that in many countries. Australia was a great example. Mm -hmm. We visited Australia. And I've seen they have even a minister called International Student Minister. Yes. You know, yeah. Australia, Amazing. you know, uh, get $8 billion yearly from international students. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very, very important to talk about it. So the quality uh, and accreditation center in Ahliya University is a very important and we finished now all the quality requirement. Of course, it's always going on mm -hmm. and we got the local accreditation. Now we are going for the international accreditation. The College of Business is applying for AACSB accreditation, which is the American Association of Collegiate or Business okay. Schools. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the hardest. And we've gone now very long. We passed the first and the second hurdle. They have to visit us and we get the accreditation. Hopefully. The College of Information Technology is are going for ABIT, which is the American Board of Engineering and Technology. Okay. And we've done also most of it. We are only waiting for, inshallah, their visit and the results. Inshallah. You know, so accreditation is an important and Ahliya University supported wholeheartedly. We even train people to be working in that department or that center. So uh, I am really uh, uh, stressing from the beginning that quality. I believe when you do something, do it right. right. Don't do it halfway. And this is what we believe in Ahliya University. And I'm sure many other university will follow the same suit. So I hope really that but I want to go back to the collaboration. Yeah. We must collaborate yes. because you've mentioned we're small. Mm. So we should use resources of each other. We must love everybody. Yes. The word love is always used at Ahliya University. Mm -hmm. They've always asked me, why did you call it Ahliya? And I said, that's the only reason I want to. It's a family atmosphere. I want yes. to feel that you are among your family. I remember when we were looking for a name, mm -hmm. many have uh, suggested one said the University of the Middle East, one said the University of this. I said, no, yeah. Ahliya University. He yeah. said, well, let's call it something Ahliya. I said, no, Ahliya University. So I'm going to stop anybody using Ahliya name in Bahrain. Yes. And I have managed to do that. And people are happy. Yes. You know, yes. when I was young, you know, I always was jealous of graduates from different universities, mm. certain universities. I always tell people, you know, if you ask somebody who graduate from good university, yeah. you ask him, what is your field? He doesn't talk about his field. He said, I am such a university graduate. And I'm not ashamed to say AUB. Yeah. I'm AUB graduate. Yes. I said, I'm asking you what field, you know, he said, yeah. I'm AUB. But if you go to another university, you graduate from a law, University, which university you graduate from? It said to you, I'm accounting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, so I see that. I wanted everybody to be really talking about Ahliya University in the same manner. That's yeah. what I said. I was jealous, mm -hmm. but I want to do the same. So, actually, when we started Ahliya University 20 years ago, I've studied completely the full story of the American University of Beirut. Mm -hmm. I went and visited the American University of Cairo. I sat with them. I went to Jordan. I saw the experience of all their universities. Mm. I sat with the president of many universities, you know, and some of them, of course, we know them very well, and some of them now in the board of trustees of Aliyah University, mm. we have Dr. Ali Abdurrahman, who is the president of Cairo University about 10 or 15 years ago. Oh. We have President Marwan Kamal, who was the pre first president of Bahrain University mm -hmm. and then became presi uh, 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 president of 
many universities in Jordan, Yarmouk yes. University, Jordan University, yes, yes. Philadelphia University. Wonderful. He's a member of our board of trustees. We have even uh, from Bahrain, Dr. Uh, Faisal Musawi. Yes. He's a member of our board of trustees. RCSI he was uh, RCSI. So I believe that using all these also brains, you know, for the university, and I've mentioned one of our colleagues from Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the University of uh, Business and Technology. Mm -hmm. The founder is a member of our board of trustees also, yes. Dr. Abdullah. Yeah. You know, so, so Ahliya University yes. really want to prove to the world that we can have a world-class university. Absolutely. And we can have we, 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 we can make well, Bahrain, as I said, Boston of the GCC and maybe Boston of the Arab world. You will. You will yeah. definitely, inshallah. Um, now, when it comes to academic research, you talked a lot about it and you compared it to the international peers. What are the uh, uh, um, exerted efforts by Ahli University to contribute positively to research in specific? It's a very important question, you know, of course, because research uh, is a very, very important uh, and that's the reason why very early I went on and insisted we should have a PhD program. Mm. You know, and uh, a PhD program is very important because a uh, professor lives on the, these resources, their yeah. student. The ideas comes from the young, you know. Professors become guide, guider rather than, you know. So, so really, uh, establishing this PhD without residence have improved a lot the status of Ahliya University as a research. Yeah. And we are in uh, starting now a center of research in Ahliya University. Okay. Uh, when I talked about research, you know, if you go and, and, and check the list of research, Ahliya University become now a member of the world research. It's very well known. Yeah. And, and I must uh, tell you that we have been growing steadily. Mm. When, I, when I look at the publication mm -hmm. in, in something we call Scopus, yes. uh, I look at it in 212. We were doing 20 publication in 213, 21, yeah. in 214. Now I see us over 100. Beautiful. In 219, I think uh, we've done 120 publication. Wonderful. In 220, we have reached nearly 130, Wonderful. you know, this is very important. It is. And uh, the most also important is to solve the problem of our industry. Yeah. And I want the research be really to go towards that. To and that's why problems. Ahliya University is uh, now planning very clearly a collaboration with the industry. Mm -hmm. We are now, we just signed last week an agreement with the, uh, the Renewable Energy, uh, uh, sustainable uh, energy Unit. Uh, yeah. unit. Yeah. And we signed an agreement with them. We met uh, His uh, Excellency uh, Dr. Abdel Hussein Mirza mm -hmm. and uh, we discussed the idea of starting a project in solar energy. Yes. It, it's very important yes. because I believe that we have a lot of energy and we should be very, r very clear about that in 15 years, we may not have cars using right. oil. Right. We should really be prepared for that. Yes. So we should be really integrating, integrating into the electrical to the electrical system. and uh, systems. Uh, a few days ago, I have a student who visited me, and I was so proud of the student. He did two publication in electrical cars. Yes. And he's doing a master in MBA, Wonderful. you know. So I said to him, how? He said, well, I'm originally an engineer. So yeah. that's how I did it. So these are very, very important. Yeah. So Ahliya University next step is to make sure to collaborate with industry very closely to solve the problem of uh, industry. Yes. We have a very great financial sector. We need, we, and they need a lot of solutions, you know, so we want to do that. Definitely, know. definitely. I mean, you just talked a little bit about um, the accomplishments and uh, the achievements that the university has done. But before we end the show, 
um, I'd like to hear from you. After 20 years of dedicated efforts, the Ahliya University has accomplished various achievements and gained several awards. Can you tell us more about those accomplishments as well as efforts to maintain this success and any future plans you have in order to build on these accomplishments, to build on these successes? Of course, it's the most important, you know, to realize that yeah. we're growing. Mm -hmm. And alhamdulillah, we're growing from strength to strength, yeah. you know. And now uh, we're concentrating and really moving to that state of art campus you yes. know at Salman city yes uh, we are uh, of course planning to increase our programs mm -hmm. to have a new programs mainly in renewable energy and in fantech and in iot internet internet of things we want to use the to get what we learned from the pandemic also yeah. to use it we know that application of artificial intelligence become very very important yes so we want to go also with the new programs to solve these problems mm -hmm. yes. so so our really uh, future is very clearly that we offer a new programs mm -hmm. we have already you know as uh, uh, applied to to offer a few a few, few of these uh, programs yes you know i hope of course uh, we will get soon the approval from yes. higher education council to offer these programs we because uh, universities must always uh, develop its programs must always update its offering and uh, it's very very important uh, to do that uh, also, uh, internationalization is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we support uh, international students. Yeah. I gave a lecture in, ch in uh, South Korea many, many years ago mm -hmm. about the exchange Programs, of students yeah. between us and Brunel and between us and Bradford University and between us and uh, a UNIS group in France yeah. where they have many uh, great uh, institution of higher education mm -hmm. and I discussed the idea of pull and push yeah. you know and they were asking me what's a pull and push I said you know to support uh, international exchange students you need somebody to push them to come to me yes so I must go and sign an agreement for somebody to push them right. and I want to pull them also yes. so I must give them for example, I'll give you an example, you yeah. know, uh, w we have nearly 25 to 30 students every year from France, Okay. you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately this year we have only one because mm -hmm. of the pandemic. pandemic yes. uh, at one time they become 70 at one year, mm -hmm. you know, and I receive these students, I give them a lecture myself okay. and I told them and the um, ambassador of France was there. Mm -hmm. I said to them, look, we are putting an officer in the airport. When you finish your one year, he will ask you 10 questions in Arabic. Yeah. If you don't <laughs> answer them, you'll go back. You know. <laughs> so, you so, so what I want to give a message that when you go to exchange, you mm -hmm. should learn something new. Right. So I want this French student, they mainly come to study IT. Yes. But they can study IT anywhere. Yes. So I said to them, when you come to Bahrain, you should learn the Bahrain heritage, you should learn the, Bahrain, the Arabic language, you should learn this. I asked my student to do the same. Every single student who went to France, yeah. and we had a few of them, yeah. I told them, if you come back, not speaking not French, speaking French <laughs> please stay there. Yeah. You know. so, so there's many things like this. So yes. one of the very important things which I want to establish in Ahliya University, and I hope in Bahrain, yeah. is to have many, many, many international students, yes. and especially uh, exchange students. It's great for the country, it's great for the economy, it's great for many things. An example of that, when we, we used to have uh, so many students from Kuwait, mm -hmm. that was about 10 years ago, okay. uh, there's one of the airlines, Al Jazeera Airlines, okay. they used to have one flight daily. Okay. You know how many flights they reached? 
No. I think 20 or 25 days. Per day, okay. And the student used to book the ticket for a full year in advance. Jesus. And if they miss one flight, they don't get compensated because, mm. you know. So, so it's not only education, it's education. It worked now in tourism, it works in culture, uh, culture mm -hmm. it works on airlines. Yeah. All, yani so, so it's a part of the economy it of is. the country. It's a part of many, many things we want to do. It is, know. it is. So, yes. That's for the international students. W uh, my last question to you, uh, Professor, is the students, your prospective students to come, uh, that will prospectively study in uh, those subjects that are new to the world or should be educated. Who is the student that is perfect for these new um, uh, fields of education? Of course, it's, 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 it's always possible to yani, educate students, you know. The main reason now for education is not to teach so much mm -hmm. and concentrate so much on certain topics. Yeah. We want to make students life long learners. Yes. And I believe in shifting mm -hmm. also. I remember I attended a conference many years ago. I always attend leadership, leadership. Yes. Once it was leader shift, okay. you know. And I said, what's a leader shift? Yeah. He said, a leader, if he couldn't shift from place to place fast. Yeah. Uh, and they bring the story of Kodak, how it disappeared, okay, the product, right. you know. Yeah. So, so students should really be learned that they are a lifelong learner. Right. They sh we should uh, treat them from the beginning to learn that they should do research for sustainable growth. Yes. Because it's a part that we should inform our students. It's all in our even curriculum now in implemented, you know, yeah. that the, the these 17 goals have not been put just to, 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 to look at them, yes. to practice implement them, them, to implement them. Absolutely. So we want our students to learn that from the university. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the prospective student, you know, we want them also to feel that they are really are prepared for the future rather than for today, you know. Mm. So, so we, 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 we would really take students from all the world, you know. Have and Ahliya University has a very good and very important thing, you know. Ahliya University is a great friend of uh, orphans. Every single orphan study in Ali University, he gets 50% exemption Beautiful. from fees. Amazing. Every single, and at one time, 100% used to be. Beautiful. Ali University is a great friend of uh, disabled, mm -hmm. you know, and would believe that we convert them from disabled to empowered. Empowered. Mm -hmm. And we did this with, with many examples. Yes, we did. One example was Mariam Fouad Shahab who came to us, you know, worried because she cannot hear, she cannot, you know, yeah. but she graduated, yes. she works now at the National Bank of Bahrain, yes. she got married, she has children, yes. and we graduated many similar to yes, her. Absolutely. Ahliya University believes that uh, this is يعني, a requirement, it's not, uh, you know, a, j a choice. So we believe really that the this important <coughs> sector of society is our responsibility. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Professor, for being with us today. Also, we would like to thank you, dear viewers, for watching us, and we will see you next week in another episode of Inside Edition.